Hi guys, it's Lindsay Ann, and today we are making crepes three different ways, and I'm gonna show you some really fun ways to fill them and fold them, perfect for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and of course, dessert. So we're gonna be making classic crepes filled with peanut butter and banana, all rolled up and topped with a drizzle of honey and a little sprinkle of cinnamon on top. Savory herb crepes stuffed with ham and melty cheese, and of course, dessert crepes studded with rainbow sprinkles and filled with ooey gooey chocolate fudge, whipped cream, and fresh strawberries. These are amazing. Now, a lot of people are intimidated by making crepes, but I promise you they're so simple, and I'm gonna show you all my tricks for getting them perfect every time using my favorite pancake mix. Now, this recipe really only has four ingredients, and it's super simple to whip together. First, my secret ingredient, one cup of Krusty's buttermilk pancake mix. Just spoon the mix gently into a measuring cup and level it off so you get the right amount of pancake mix. The reason I love using pancake mix to make crepes is because it pretty much already has like half the ingredients already in the mix that you need to make crepes. There's a little salt for some extra flavor, a tiny bit of sugar to give the crepes a nice crispiness and golden brown color without adding too much sweetness. So this recipe really is perfect for making sweet or savory crepes. Now we're gonna combine the wet ingredients into a measuring cup. So we start with one and a quarter cup of water. Crepes usually call for milk and water in the recipe, but since there's already buttermilk in the mix, all we have to do is add the water, and that's one less ingredient I have to go out and buy, making these even easier. Then we're just gonna add two large eggs, and two tablespoons of melted butter. Now we're just gonna add the pancake mix into our wet ingredients, and I'm gonna beat this together with an electric mixer for about a minute or two until it's nice and smooth and combined. You can also do this by hand with a whisk if you like, or you can just throw all the ingredients into a blender and pulse it up until it's nice and smooth. I like to pour my mixture through a sieve to remove any lumps. As you can see, the crepe batter should be nice and thin and smooth and liquidy. It's gonna be a lot thinner than a traditional pancake mix, and you're not gonna to wanna to see any lumps in it. Now I'm just gonna cover the mixture and pop it in the fridge for about an hour to give the batter a chance to rest so the crepes don't come out rubbery, so they have that nice, delicate texture. And this batter is really great because it'll keep for about two days covered in the fridge, so you can prepare it in advance and then just pull it out when the weekend comes so you have nice, fresh, homemade crepes. So while this is in the fridge, I'm gonna get my fillings ready. As always, you can find all of these recipes on my website at lindsayannbakes.com, so head on over there after the video for all the details. Okay, so our batter has rested in the fridge for about an hour, so now I'm just gonna take a whisk and give it a little mix to combine all the ingredients back together. Now I'm just going to lightly grease my pan that's been preheated to about medium to medium high heat. Pretty much any nonstick pan will work, so you definitely don't have to go out and buy one of those fancy crepe pans. Today I'm using a small eight inch pan. Um, I just find it a little easier to use a smaller pan than one of those bigger heavy duty pans to make crepes. So for each crepe, you're gonna need about three to four tablespoons of batter. So what I like to do is take a quarter cup measuring cup or a small ladle and pour the batter in there first and then pour the batter into the center of the pan and quickly swirl away so you get a thin layer of batter that covers the entire bottom of the pan. Just keep going in a circular motion until the batter starts to dry and you can't swirl it anymore. Now you're gonna cook the crepe for about one to two minutes until you see the edges start turning that light golden brown color and it starts to dry out a little bit. Then just loosen the edges with a spatula and slide it right under the center of the crepe. Lift it up and give it a flip. Then you're just gonna cook the other side for about 30 seconds to a minute until it's fully cooked. Look at that gorgeous golden brown delicate lacy crepe. Then you're just gonna slide it right onto a plate. Then just stack them up and keep on creping. Don't worry if your first few don't come out perfect. It's gonna take a few tries, but once you get the hang of it, it is so much fun.
Now while you're cooking your crepes, you can keep these warm by putting them in a 200 degree Fahrenheit oven until they're ready to serve. Or these are also great if you want to make them ahead of time. Just wrap them up, put them in a Ziploc bag, and pop them in the fridge for a few days or even the freezer for a few months. Then when you're ready to serve, just reheat them and you're all set. Fresh homemade crepes. Now we get to the good part. Once the crepes are made, what you fill them with is entirely up to you, but today I'm gonna to show you some of my favorites. My all-time favorite combo is to spread on a layer of creamy peanut butter, slice up some bananas, and then just layer them right on top. And then you're just gonna roll it all up. And to finish them all off, you're just gonna drizzle on a little honey and a little sprinkling of cinnamon. These are delish. If you don't like peanut butter, you can use almond butter, sunflower butter, even some hazelnut Nutella spread is also really good. Or you can keep it simple with just a little jelly or jam or serve it with a side of maple syrup, a little dusting of powdered sugar. And these are gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, so now we're gonna make savory crepes and you can serve these for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I like to add a little salt and pepper to the batter and then while the crepe is cooking, I like to sprinkle on some fresh chopped herbs. Today I have some chopped chives and this creates such a beautiful crepe with the specks of green on top. My favorite way to fill these savory crepes is with some sliced ham and a little cheese. I like to put on two slices of ham and one slice of cheese in the middle and just fold it right over. Then just add a little dollop of sour cream on top and a sprinkling of fresh chopped chives. Now I can't leave you guys hanging without dessert. So on to my favorite way to enjoy crepes. To make these dessert crepes extra special, I like to add some sprinkles to the crepe while it's cooking to make a rainbow confetti crepe. This is totally optional, but I think it makes them really fun. Now the best part. I love to fill these with some chocolate fudge. This is just an ice cream topping. And then I spread that on nice and thick. A few dollops of whipped cream and then I layer on some sliced strawberries. And I like to fold this over into a little cone shape. There we go. And finish it all off with a drizzle of some more chocolate fudge, a little dollop of whipped cream and a garnish of strawberries and sprinkles on top. How incredible do these look? So there you have it, homemade crepes, a ton of different ways. I hope you guys loved this video. Head on over to my website at lindsayannbakes.com for the full recipe and a ton more that I know you're gonna love. And be sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel so you can be the first to see my all new videos coming up. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.